Talk Tokyo TV. I'm John Purcell and I'm here with Anna Spencer to talk about the big book of numbers. Welcome, Anna. Wow, I've written a book. How are you, John? <laughs> very well, very nervous actually. I'm a little bit nervous because I have to, a little bit of confession, um, I did part ways with maths somewhat earlier and I regret it because whenever I pick up a book on science or if I listen to a, uh, watch one of those wonderful documentaries on TV, the science, the, when science hits maths, I sort of wander off. And I did try to do philosophy at, at uni for a while, and a lot of the, a lot of the explanations lost me altogether. So I apologise to mathematicians. Nothing to apologise for. Maths is one of those weird subjects, isn't it? You'll never, if you're sitting around with someone saying, "I went on a holiday last year. I went to uh, to Europe, and we went to Croatia. Then we went to," you don't get someone saying, "Oh no, stop, please, please." Oh, I hate geography. Oh. I had the worst geography teacher at school, or if you say, you know, um, I was reading a book, uh, there was this guy called Henry VIII, oh god, not history, oh no, okay, people for some reason, I have this, in some small percentage of cases, a visceral aversion to mathematics, one of the, one of the things I actually really hope for the book is, it, it, I think it performs many roles, and I think with some people who, who find maths a little bit intimidating, it might be able to show them the beauty and, uh, and win them back. How, how can this book help someone like me, is it going to give me an easy way into to the, the, maths? This is, it's, it's 430 pages long, it really is, it's two books in one. Half of it is mathematics, and half of it is just gorgeous numerical trivia. Uh, you know, for example, you're, you're a handyman, you know WD-40, that stuff you spray around? Yeah. WD stands for water displacement, and the 40, well they tried this compound, WD-1, and it didn't work. They tried another one, WD2, it didn't work. WD3, and they just kept going and going, WD40, hello. <laughs> so the 40 is the 40th different chemical compound they attempted. They're actually trying to clean uh, ICBM missile casings. Now there's no maths in that. That's just a numerical, yeah. bizarre, beautiful fact, right? The number 40 is the only number in the English language that spells out alphabetically. F-O-R-T-Y. Again, just a trivia about numbers. The other half of the book is mathematics. And it's, it's my, my main target audience is the top end of primary school and then into high school, bright, engaged, curious kids. Because none of it is your traditional school text curriculum. It's, it's not it doesn't take you faster through the HSC or the VCE. It just shows kids that there's a world of maths outside of what they normally deal with it's just quite beautiful yeah. and it's not done in a way of well if you don't know this bit you can't it's all built up in slowly in steps and more explaining the beauty of stuff than necessarily pass fail though it is loaded with quiz questions too so if you want to work and actually tune your mathematical side it's, it's got a bit of that to it so when you were at school um, there's a period of school i suppose where where maths takes a for a lot of people, a leap that they can't follow. They mm. start using letters in maths. And yeah. A lot of people complain. It's called that's, algebra. Yeah, that's the point. Where, <laughs> I'm, I'm done. Yeah. Were you um, interested in maths the whole way through? Did you take maths and then do uh, yeah, pre-unit yeah. maths and that sort of thing? The yeah, end? yeah. I, I, from the earliest of ages, I can remember loving maths, like back in first grade, second grade. I had a breakthrough moment with a teacher, a wonderful one called Ms. Russell. In second grade, she realised I was really devouring maths hand up and trying to answer every question, not being difficult, yeah. but getting irritated. No one else knew the answer. I clearly know the answer. Why won't you let me answer the question, please? And she came up to me one day lunchtime at school and said, look, Adam, after lunch, we're gonna do these 10 questions in the book. I bet if, instead of coming to class, I bet if you went down to the library, you wouldn't be able to do all 50 questions in the chapter in the time it took us to do 10. And I was just, <laughs> you watch, Ms. Russell. Bring it on. Race down to the library. I'm mean, scrolling through, just racing because I know I'm racing my class, racing my class. Got back up there and she was like halfway through question nine. Sat at the back, wasn't walking around going, look at me. Just went up and showed them to her after and she went, hey, that's great. And so she, she didn't let me race ahead because I'd just be more bored six months from now. But whatever maths I did, you know the old, you played a bit of piano and I was doing eight hours practice. Yeah. You played a bit of tennis, I was off every. It was just that. I just buried myself in the real fundamentals, the rote learning of arithmetic and fractions and times tables. And maths just always made sense. It was about third year uni before I really got to any mathematics where I went, oh, I don't quite understand 
what's going on. They were always made a beautiful sentence to me. So part of the crew I'm reaching out to with this is kids like that who love maths and find the stuff at school maybe a little bit boring. Yeah. And I'm actually releasing it also, um, you can get it obviously through the beautiful Booktopia um, tentacles, through my website I'm selling teacher's notes. Oh, yeah. So teachers can actually build across the year a course of extension or challenge classes. My daughter's nine years old and at her school I go once a week and take a group of about 10 kids for one hour a week and we just do stuff that's off the curriculum. Yeah. Just weird out there. I love it. So I'm trying to reach out to that part as well as just giving people a history, the numbers of science, pop culture. If you, if you watch something like QI with Stephen Fry yeah. and you find that cute, then the book is loaded with that sort of stuff. Well, um, you've, got, you've got a couple of minutes. Is there yeah. any way you can lift my, my mass levels um, beyond the zero that they're at now? How about, I'll give you a quick, I'll give you a quick quiz out of the book, okay? This, Quicks. This is gonna hurt. Spot quiz out. Some of, it, some, of it, some of it will be maths, some of it won't be maths. Okay, I'll name a couple of numbers. You can tell me if they're prime numbers or not, okay? Remember what a prime number is? Very, very badly. Yeah. Six is not prime because it's two times three. Seven is prime because it's one times seven, you can't break it down. So is 10 prime or not? No. Why not? 10, come on, think about the number. Two times five. Nice, is 13 prime or not? It should be prime, shouldn't it? Look at that, beautiful! A human mind in panic, I love it. <laughs> Prove to me that 16 is not a prime number. Two times eight. There you go, it's even, straight away, good. What about 51, prime or not? Get down! Oh, Wrong you? answer. Now, what you can do, you see, you, you don't. It doesn't appear on your twelve times tables or anything. Yeah, that's surprising. Fifty-one is three times seventeen. How are you meant to know that? Add together the numbers five and one. What do you get? Six. Six is divisible by three, isn't it? Yeah. If the digits added up give you a number divisible by three, the original number was divisible by three. That's that hurts my head. That, that's. If That's a nice little, little mathematical fact. Okay. The town of Liege in Belgium tried to revolutionise their postal service by training 37 what to deliver the mail? Pigeons. Cats. Cool. Guess how it went? <laughs> Spectacular failure. <laughs> Absolute debacle. But kudos to the guy who thought, bugger it. Let's see if these cats <laughs> can't give out the money. True story. They're going to be bringing the slippers in. No, can't do no chance. No chance. Non-mathematical question. Jeroboam, Methuselah, Salamanazar, Melchior, Goliath, and Magnum are all types of what? Oh, Magnum's champagne. That's all I got there for Goliath. Correct. Oh, what? Woo! Champagne. You have your normal champagne bottle. Yep. The big ones are Magnum. And all the other variations of sizes have names. Most of them named after biblical figures. Salamanazar, um, Melchizedek, 40 bottles. He must have been a party animal. What about that little one on the plane? Piccolo. Oh, that's good. Piccolo, Demi, Standard, Magnum, Jeroboam, Rehoboam, Methuselah, Salamanazar, Balthazar, Negevanezza, Melchior, Solomon, Sovereign, Primat, Melchizedek. Okay, mathsy sort of question. There's only one number that has that number of letters in its name. 10 has only three letters. 20 has only six letters. What's the only number that has that number of letters in its name? Four. Boom! <laughs> Boo yeah! You're on fire, my friend. Final question. This is for the. This is for the. This is for the goal. This is for the bananas. <laughs> Here we go. Where are we going to go? Which TV show am I describing? Balloon phone, belt phone, clock phone, comb phone, donut phone, fireplace phone. Golf shoe phone. Get smart. Maxwell Smart had 51 different fake sh phones in his show. That's the list of all 51. The only one that comes to mind when I think of it is the shoe, shoe phone. Was, yeah. My favourite one was his miniature phone in a normal phone. <laughs> phone. So that's the book. Half of it is maths. Yeah. And I think where it really reaches out is to kids who are just getting into the adventure and want more than what school's giving them. And the other half is just a list of bizarre numerical trivia that you can just quote to fans. The, the old toilet read, you just grab a chapter and go, that, bang. That's the market. See, that, that, that's, when I'm thinking marketing this book out there, there's, there are enough toilets out there. We, we class them down as the bog book. Yeah. The brilliant thing. You pick it up and... 
The only challenge is if you're at a friend's house and you've got this tucked down your arm, so like, I'm off to the bathroom for a second. Um, does anyone have a pen and some paper? Adam Spencer, thank you very much for coming in. It's been a pleasure. I've, I've learned stuff. My, I've been stressed, but it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Absolute pleasure, Joel. Thank Thanks, you. mate. Adam Spencer's book, The Big Book of Numbers, is available at booktopia.com.au right now.